Here's my disclaimer for our August meeting. My microphone wasn't working properly, but we really want to release this video, so I'm going to try to voice over. We love technology, so we can make this work. So let's get started. Remember, this is voiceover, so we're doing our best. So hello and welcome to Geg so Cal. I am Karen Lagola. I am a co-leader for our gag. We are very excited. We have a guest speaker tonight from Taiwan. And of course, I am joined by my other co-leader. I'll let her introduce herself now. Hi, I'm Nancy Minikotsi. I am here and excited to talk to everybody about some of the goodies that we have back to school for back to school and some of the updates that Google has done. And also excited to talk to our special international guest. So Jessica, just introduce yourself quickly. We're going to spend some more time with Jessica later on. We have a few googly things to show you first, but she'll just introduce herself quick. Hi, I'm Jessica. I'm the international guest. <laughs> we'll visit you tomorrow. Yeah. All right, so this is what's on our agenda. So we have a uh, Jamboard. We are going to talk a little bit about Google, back to school. We're going to talk to Jessica about uh, how we can connect with her and participate in her research and talk about gig SoCal celebrations and next steps. Okay, so um, we have our Jamboard here. So hopefully, even though we uh, don't have a big crowd here at the moment, um, this will be open and we hope that you will participate and put in your uh, thoughts. So we'd love to know what is a goal that you have for the new school year. So hopefully, you can go ahead and do that. This slide deck will be available on the website, so you'll have the link for this. Here I'm asking Jessica if she has a goal for the new youth school year. Uh, for the first half, I will be focusing on my short-term research program. And for the second half, I will uh, bring what I observe here and back to Taiwan. And first of all, share what I observe here and apply what I observe and combine, uh, try to combine the results and back to the Taiwanese context. Yeah, that will uh, basically be my goal for this semester and the school year. I'm about to put Nancy on the spot and ask her about her goal as well. Uh, not today. <laughs> <laughs> my goal is to... My goal is to make it through the school year. That is my goal. Yeah. Very, very practical. I have, up, I have to come up with a goal for my evaluation um, this year. So I'll have one next week. We can check back in. I'll put it up there. <laughs> and now I'm suggesting that you can use this same Jamboard with your students starting the year. Have them set their goals on how they want to learn yeah. through the year, what will make them successful have them write it down, and then you can check in with them at the semester break or before. We are Googly. Um, if you were not aware, Google had a big event called the Anywhere School recently. They announced a lot of different things, a lot of updates, a lot of things for Chromebooks, new Chromebooks, and Chrome OS, if you use that. There are improvements for Classroom, which we'll be talking about later. Um, there are originality reports that are now available in more languages, white, uh, all kinds of upgrades, improvements, and changes to Google Workspace. So very exciting. And uh, if you go ahead and you click over here, you can go to the Anywhere School event blog, and it will give you a lot of information about how that worked and what changes are coming or might already be here. Um, there was also a summit in California in July, July 27th, where they talked a lot about what was new. And so you can click here to see the website and you can click here for that slide deck. 
So hopefully you'll check that out and see if there are new things that you want to use in your classroom. Here's some back to school planning tools. We've included here some templates that we thought would make it easy for you to start your school year. Things you might want to use, some Google Talks, some tips for your Gmail and some Google Classroom tools. So you can go in and you can make a copy of any of these resources. And one thing that I'm personally very excited about, uh, it actually came out, of, I think it came out at the very end of last school year, but if you didn't know, you can now format your text in Google Forms. You can have bold, you can have italics, you can have underlines, just make sure people don't think it's a link. Um, and you can do all the fun things that you um, really wanted to be able to do. We have a link here. Eric Kurtz did an awesome job, made a video explaining how you could format text if you like to watch videos to learn. If you'd rather read, click here to go to his website where he explains everything. Either way, your forms are going to look a whole lot better. This is Figma. This is a new partner that Google is partnering with. We haven't had a chance to really play around with it yet, but from what we saw, it's kind of like Canva and maybe SketchUp, a combination. There's a design piece. There's also like an infographic piece. So check it out. We'll probably do a future session on just it once we, uh, once we get a chance to dig into it a little bit deeper. Yeah, you do have to get verified. Um, once you do, you're in for two years, and then you have to re-verify at the end of two years, but it is free, so we like that. Uh, another new thing is Google Classroom add-ons, and what these are, they need to be approved by your admin, but they allow you to create assignments and work for your kids without leaving the Google Classroom environment. So you can create, just like you can create an assignment or a question in Google Classroom for your students, you can create an Edpuzzle assignment or a Google Arts and Culture assignment, an Adobe Express assignment, book widgets. Um, these are all partners. They're all add-ons that you can um, add to your Google Classroom simply by clicking on uh, the add-ons link there. Here's a blog post that kind of explains more about it. If you want to get them or if you want to ask your admin to turn it on for you, you can refer to this. Here we thought we'd give you some cool Google logos because we love to put logos in. Sometimes you need the Google icons and they do change periodically the color. So these are the current versions of the Google logos for you to use in your presentations. Right, and we have here all the official logos for the different um, workspace apps, some stars, and of course, not only a blue ribbon, but a yellow, a green, and a red one. So we like those. And all of these, you can just click to copy and paste. Um, we have a back to school slide deck in here. Um, it is available to be edited by anybody. Karen, you put in a few things, did you not? Yes. This is our SoCal Says, and we have a couple of slide decks in here for the first things that you'll be thinking about when you go back to school, classroom culture, of course, building that culture and that community feeling. So this is a curated list. We got it from... Um, Gag NorCal actually started it, and then I put in a couple other resources, so you can click on those resources. There's also Remembering Student Names, that is also at the top of our list, right? And this is just some ideas that teachers had, how they do it. Um, when you click on this link, please add how you, the tricks that you use to remember student names, and we'll just keep this as a living doc, and we'll keep sharing it. So that's what we have as far as new in Google and updates. And now I'm going to turn it back over to Karen so that we can uh, talk to Jessica.
So you met her a little bit at the beginning of the meeting, but this is Jessica. She's visiting from Taiwan. I've had the pleasure of working with Jessica and a group of other Taiwanese teachers for about a year. And I'm going to let Jessica tell you about her mission. Yeah. Hi, I'm Jessica. I'm from Taiwan. And actually, I teach in a city, Taichung. Taichung is in the central part of Taiwan. Yeah. Uh, actually like the second or the third biggest city in Taiwan and I teach in a vocational high school and my students are all industrial majors so my students are mainly boys and my students are from the 10 year to the 12 years students so they are basically from 16 years old to 18 years old and uh as a teacher and also a PhD student, my research focus has always been on digital divide. And so as, uh, from the Google form that I sent you uh, earlier, uh, I uh, want to know how teachers uh, deal with the problem when you are facing the problem of digital divide. Uh, from the literature review, I read uh, the digital divide can cover two parts. Uh, the first part also, uh, of course, will be the quantity, uh, will be the devices, the number of devices, and also uh, the sufficiency of Wi-Fi. But right now, uh, because our government has uh, already know the problem, and this semester, uh, we are imposing an ed educational policy that uh, at least uh, every six students can share one device in every school and for some so-called disadvantaged school every one student can get one device for learning but uh unlike the students in america school uh, the devices uh for the sharing ones uh can only be kept in school cannot be taken to home so there will be kind of problems for their learning and the second part of digital divide will be the uh, in Chinese, we will refer it to quality, but uh, for the meaning, it would be referred to the technology competence. It means, uh, do they are they capable enough to use the devices for learning? Yeah, because many students just uh, they you uh, they have their cell phones, they have their iPads. They have their laptops uh, since they were little kids. But most of them just know how to use them to play games. But they do not know how to use them to learn or to create. And also, during the time uh, of the pandemic, when students have to learn at home, uh, some students want to learn with their devices, but they do not have helpers who have enough technology competence to help them. So uh, after uh, a certain period of time of distance learning, uh, the digital divide could lengthen uh, or worsen uh, the education, how to say that in English? Uh, yeah. mm, could uh, deepen the digital divide? The uh, digital divide could uh, lead to uh, the the social inequality. Yeah, that's yes. what I want to say. Yeah. So devices does not it, dev the number of devices is not enough. The knowledge, the competence to use them is will be the key. Will be the key. So that's what I that's what I want to learn and that's what i want to find out and that's what i want to observe from your classrooms yeah so that's why i'm here because you have longer uh period of time for online learning and in taiwan actually we have like three months uh online learning actually but from uh that that actually was last year but this year since this may we have really like a chaos situation uh, because the policy changes all the time. Like just some students stop, uh, student A stop, uh, got infected. So she stayed at home 
for this week and student B started from this Wednesday. So she's uh, the, this week counts from this Wednesday until next Wednesday. So the chaos is some students stay in classroom, some students stay at home, and some teachers stay in the classroom, some teachers stay at home. So actually it's really chaos. And actually, although as I told you, this is the very first day of our semester, some classes, still have some missing students and some uh, some classes still have some missing teachers so hybrid teaching has already started from the very beginning of the semester so technology has to exist to help but how to utilize technology yeah to help them to really learn not just for fun yeah yeah, because parents are always worried because there are so many schools also have faced uh, the pressure from parents that you have to abandon students from bringing their own cell phones. You have to keep the cell phones for us. Yeah, we cannot uh, tell our, our kids not to use cell phones, but teachers, you have to keep the cell phones for parents because they are worrying their students, they are worrying their kids playing cell phone games all the time. So they are expecting teachers to do that job for them. That's exactly what it's like here. Our experience in the U.S. sounds a lot like Taiwan. <laughs> yeah. no, yes, yes. Sitting here nodding along. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm sharing some issues that we experience with parents not wanting students to use technology yeah. at school because they feel like it's too much screen time, but the need for technology, yeah. how we were also hybrid, just relating to everything that is going on in Taiwan with what Jessica is describing. Yeah. yeah, so that's a dilemma we're facing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So that's, that's, the question in my mind and also the question in many teachers mind so that's why i am here to observe if you also have the same dilemma and how do you deal with it yeah so in that effort we can support jessica in a couple of ways so here on this slide you can see that we have two links one is to a Jamboard because one of Jessica's goals is also to link up and collaborate with classrooms. So if you are interested in having your students work with some students yes. from Taiwan, yes. please fill out the Jamboard. Yeah. And the other link is to Jessica's website where you can actually do the survey for her, which is helping her collect the data that she's in the U.S. to gather. Absolutely. And then... So here, this is the link for the Jamboard, uh, and this is the link for the website and the form, is it not? Um, and maybe could we uh, talk about just briefly what the collaboration might look like? What kinds of things, um, Jessica, are you looking for um, to have a, other teachers collaborate with you and, your, and the students? uh actually that's what uh, the mission was just assigned like uh last week <laughs> yeah because uh my co-workers from the education uh, bureau of education uh they knew that i'm here so they want me try to find some links that my uh that i could try to build that uh if we can have the opportunities for us for our students to have some links to uh, uh, to have links to talk to the students here so that might have the chance to learn that we can use technology to link with uh, international students so they can utilize the language they learn in the classroom. Yeah, so they will feel like the English they learn, or maybe another different kind of language they learn, are really useful, not just only for written tests, yeah, not just for uh, memorizing words or just uh, to, for written exams. And actually, that's another educational policy we are imposing right now. We are looking forward to become a bilingual country 
in 2030, 2030. <laughs> that is a big dream, yeah. So we are uh, try to have so many Clio courses in Taiwan. We are trying to have more courses uh, conducting or te taught in English. And so if students uh, can have more chances to use their English, I believe that will be they will be more willing to learn. English, yeah. So uh, any kind of links will do because I do know that the time difference is really a big obst obstacle. Yeah, because the time difference, the time difference, the time difference here, uh, it's really hard to find a a common time for the students here to have an online meeting in class with the students in Taiwan. Yeah, so maybe the written one might be another way to contact it. So written or perhaps even, you know, short video messages. Yeah, 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 maybe the, yeah, that's what I'm right. Yeah, that's what comes to my mind. Exactly, flip read, I think. What are your school hours? Mm, uh, for my school, from uh, we usually uh, every day we will stay until four. But for Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday we will stay until five. But we will our students go to school uh, before eight o'clock. So eight to four or eight to five. That's a long day. Is there homework afterwards? Many students, they, many students still go to cram schools. So especially for the seniors, they are preparing for the entrance school and trans exams for college. They have to go to the cram school maybe until 9.30. Well, they will get home like 10 o'clock or even 10.30. And then they start to prepare their school quizzes, they start to study. Yeah, so they have very hard time studying in high school in Asia. Wow, intense. Really. And actually, although we saw we call summer vacation for our for many senior students, high school students, they have extra courses in summer vacation. Yeah, extra courses. So they, they actually do not have the real summer vacation. They, they could come wow. to school could, to participate in extra courses either in school or some will go to cram school to study whole day. And some students go to uh, the summer course in school and um weekends they go to cram school during the summer vacation wow <laughs> that sounds incredible i understand very challenging yeah yeah so uh, what they are doing is very busy preparing for the entrance exam but for the subject I'm teaching that is English, if they do not have the chance to use what they are learning, they will lose the motivation to learn it. They will forget how to use it. Yeah. Like what I'm doing right now. Yeah, if I just have, do not have chance to use my English, my ability will just get lost. I will lose my ability to to use English. Yeah. That is very true. Yeah. So that's why my uh, my uh, fellow teachers, um, my boss, <laughs> actually <laughs> hope I can find some links to help our students. Yes, yeah, to motivate them to uh, actually know what they are learning is actually useful. Yeah, to motivate students. Yes, that's what um, we are looking forward to. 
Yeah, some teachers use cultural, same cultural boxes. I heard that some teachers, not only from high school, but also junior high or elementary school teachers, they gather cultural boxes yeah, to send each other. That would be very interesting. Yeah. Well, that sounds like fun. Yeah. Okay. So, moving, shall we move on? I am so excited about this. This is our Let's Celebrate Each Other, another awesome idea that we are piggybacking <laughs> off of NorCal gag for. This is a form we'd love for you to fill out when you are presenting somewhere or when you have success in your classroom or you've graduated from your master's program, whatever it is that you have done we would love to celebrate you. So please fill out this form so that we can mention your achievement in our GEG meetings and in our letters. And just click here for the form. And again, all those links will be in the description below the YouTube video. And in the slide deck, if you are going to our website where this will be posted shortly. Okay, so a little googly inspiration. Um, Google has a lot of programs to support educators so that you can learn and find out everything you want to know. Um, they just revamped the certified educator um, recently. So level one and level two certifications are available. Level one is more kind of how does this work? And level two is a little bit more about how can I use these tools to innovate in my classroom? So you can get that information here. Uh, if you want to be a Google trainer and teach other people about how to use Google, uh, you can find out about that here. There's a website and a Twitter chat also if you're interested. Uh, you can become a coach following uh, Google's coaching method to help teachers improve their practices. And so there's information here. And if you have a project in mind to help education, you can apply to be a Google Innovator. The VIA or VIA 22 cohorts, it's virtual uh, learning. It puts you together with a great community. Uh, that's coming up soon, and you can learn about that here as well. So if you're interested, we encourage you to learn about these programs and participate. Hopefully you'll find something that will work for you. We have a GEG SoCal banner and you can go on here. So editing, we were going to do it only today, but I'll leave it open another couple of days. If you want to add your Bitmoji, it will go right here along with ours. Jessica should add her Bitmoji. Oh, okay. Yes. <laughs> Jessica can add hers, so the link is here. And take a look at our slide, Nancy, pull it back up. I just want to point out that we tried to capture like all of the different places of representations of SoCal, right? So we have mountains, we have our beautiful city of LA, we have the beach, and you can put your Bitmoji in the place that is closest to where you teach or closest to your heart. We need to have Jessica in here. She'll be in here soon. Okay. Um, so for our next steps, Karen, you want to close it out? So here's our next steps. This is a link to um, a connect form. So if you want to, that's to our Google group so you can connect with us at any time. If you want to present something, share something that you've learned or something that you're doing in your classroom that you think is really cool, please fill out the present form. We're always interested in getting our members to learn from each other. And the last one, ideas for our next sessions, anything that you want us to talk about, um, please fill out this form. We'll be happy. We want to make sure that we are addressing your needs. Um, and supporting you however we can with this group. So please take advantage of these forms and connecting with us so that uh, you get more out of the group. I think that's it. I think we should say, we'll say goodbye. Our next meeting is gonna be in October. Look for an email and uh, have a wonderful 
rest of your day. Thanks for watching and thanks for putting up with our sound problems. I hope it was okay to watch. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs>